Okay guys, so today we'll be talking about uh, having some residual current travelling on our cables when there's no demand. Occasionally we notice that when we're testing uh, a circuit with our multimeter, we may have up to 50 volts AC travelling up the cable that doesn't have any current flowing through it or we've not created any demand. Now generally that's not a problem. Most modern boilers do not see that voltage as a demand and won't react to it. However, if you come across that scenario and if you wonder why there is up to 50 volts traveling uh, on a cable that you're testing when there's no demand, it could be uh, due to what we call capacitive coupling, where it's literally cables running in certain groups or in a manner uh, where they're coming across another cable running beside it that's carrying electricity and a, a tiny amount of voltage is just being transferred onto your cable, the one you're testing and although there's no voltage travelling through that there's no actual voltage travelling through it it's working as a capacitor and it's having that tiny amount of voltage travelling on to that cable uh, which is classed as safe voltage, safe to touch, and generally we don't have to do anything about it. So what we're gonna do now, I'm not gonna go into much details of it. Uh, however, we're gonna quickly test it, see what we're picking up, uh, and what can be done about it, if you want to do anything about it. Although, uh, in our heating industry, it's not an issue, because most of our boilers and applications are designed in a manner where they're not recognizing uh, up to 50 volts as a signal anyway. Uh, so let's see. Okay, so our fuse spur is already turned on. Programmer's energized. It's a typical S-plant setup. Heating zone valve and hot water zone valve. We have a room thermostat for your heating and a cylinder start for your hot water cylinder. And we have a bulb there that, that's demonstrating uh, a boiler, okay? So let's just create a demand for your hot water. Cylinder stat is calling for hot water. So shortly we should have this bulb, this bulb turning on. Okay, now that demonstrates that our, our boiler and the pumps just come on now. Okay, so if we want to check voltage using our multimeter set to AC voltage reading on the signal cable that's coming to the boiler and neutral we have 237 volts AC, which is absolutely fine. That's how we expect it to be. So let's just turn this demand off. Okay, demand's gone off. Let's just make sure there's no power traveling here now. So we have around 27, 22 volts and decreasing. Let's just check that against earth as well. Ooh, 90 volts and decreasing, 90 to 91 volts and decreasing. So anything above 50 volts is considered dangerous, okay? Now, occasionally it happens, uh, as I mentioned, due to capacitive coupling. Uh, other times, the actual load you have, which in our case is a bulb, uh, does store some energy, uh, some voltage, and sometimes it backfeeds that as well, depending on how it's manufactured. So. Let's see if it's reduced now. So still 97, 96, but as you can see, it's counting down, okay? So let's assume this reading was up to 50 volts AC. Uh, let's just double check it with the neutral. So as you can see, with the neutral, it's reduced down to around four volts AC. Let's say when we checked the signal cable uh, against neutral or earth, it was giving us up to 50 volts AC and this is where if your load like your boiler for example is reacting to that 50 volts AC now we need to do something about it as I mentioned earlier in the heating industry it's unnecessary because our appliances are not uh, designed to react to 50 volts or up to 50 volts uh, on a signal cable but if we have a fault scenario and we have, let's say, up to 90 volts, 100 volts, 120 volts traveling on a signal cable, 
then the planes may detect it as a signal when everything is turned off or in closed position appliance is recognizing that as a signal how do we eliminate it if we needed to eliminate it now we have our signal cable which in our case is gray cable coming from this junction box which which basically turns our boiler on and off okay what we can do is we can use uh, a contact suppressor which is something like this it only has two cables onto it um, you can basically class it as a bleed resistor so it works as a bleed point for that voltage that's traveling through these cables currently unnecessarily okay it's not required it's there and we can get rid of it if we wanted to okay so as you checked that the voltage was around 90 volts earlier let's just double check it to see if it's reduced now around 97 96 so it's still the same and one thing i can guarantee you that if we remove this bulb this voltage will reduce okay let's just double check it so i've removed the bulb let's see 36 volts ac 35 volts ac okay so now it's safe to touch voltage there so this is the culprit in our case right now okay let's not go into detail of what what's happening here however our aim right now is to reduce that voltage from let's say 50 volts down to i don't know 5 10 volts ac okay which is more acceptable in that regard although up to 50 volts is fine as well what we're going to do now is we can actually connect this device between signal cable that's come into the appliance to the boiler and the earth point okay depending on what was actually causing uh, the capacitive coupling um, and the voltage travel but we will connect it between the signal cable and the earth wire and let's see what it does and how it behaves okay let's just safely isolate it first it's isolated and I'm going to literally just plug this in. One side of it in with the signal cable. And the other side of it goes with the earth. Okay, so that's connected to earth and as you can see it's literally two cables one's connected to the signal cable as close as possible to the boiler and then the second cable is connected to earth point here okay so let's repeat the process let's just turn it back on let's create a demand for hot water again now in a short while we should have demand on the boiler let's see Okay, so we have the demand. Now we turn this demand off. So demand's gone off and let's check the voltage. So same again, let's just quickly try between live and neutral around 65, 66 volts there because we are suppressing it against earth here. But if you remember on earth, we had about 97, 98 volts there it's down to 6.3 around 6 volts ac okay now you won't have it against earth and neutral at the same time there is a, a, a de deliberate fault i've put on this application here that was causing that issue but normally you will have it against live and neutral okay so you literally put this device between live and neutral and that will reduce it between live and neutral so you're not going to have uh, many volts traveling on your signal cable okay so as you can see there's not much traveling now because this uh, contact suppressor is actually doing its job and it's, it's basically working as a bleed point so around six volts against neutral it's around 66 volts ac about 65 and that's reducing as well but if i remove the leg from the earth point and connect it to the neutral point
And let's check it against neutral. As you can see, there's literally nothing there now. So 0.155 volts, okay? So yeah, that's what it's designed to do. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we don't we don't see these uh, kind of uh, contact suppressors or bleed resistors in our heating setup. Majority of that stuff is already built in into our boiler PCBs and different applications that we use. Uh, so we don't really need to use these external stuff. Uh, but just in case if you wondered or somebody suggested to you that you can use these things, uh, that's how to uh, plug it in or to kind of wire it in. Um, that's how it works, but I don't think you will require it uh, as a heating engineer or as a gas engineer really. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, as always, leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel uh, and press the bell icon so you don't miss our future videos. Until then, take care. Bye for now.